In this video, we are going to state and prove the triangle inequality as a theorem of congruence geometry, which remember in congruence geometry, uh, we accept Hilbert's four axioms of incidence, four axioms of betweenness, and the six axioms of congruence. Um, and so the statement of the triangle inequality is the following. If A, B, and C are three distinct non-collinear points in this congruence geometry, then the segment AC will be less than the segment AB plus BC. Now, I should mention that this statement itself has a lot of you know, a lot of jargon built into it. What does it mean to take AB plus BC? And what does it mean to add together two segments? Which, in a congruence geometry, we don't necessarily have the notion of measure. So these aren't numbers we're adding together. These are segments we're adding together. Well, of course, the previous video in lecture 20 made sense of what it means to add together two segments. The idea is you take the segment BC and you translate it onto the ray AB at the point B and thus extending the segment. So we can talk about their sum here. What does it mean for one segment to be less than the other? Well, the idea is this segment, when translated onto this segment, um, the translation lies in between the endpoint of A and C in that situation. So in, in a congruence geometry, we, these three non-collinear points always satisfy the relation AC is less than AB plus BC. So why does he get the name triangle inequality? Well, inequality makes sense because it is an actual inequality with regard to this inequality on segments here. Um, it's called a triangle inequality, the triangle inequality, because really we think of these three distinct non-collinear points as vertices of a triangle. So you have a segment A, a segment B, excuse me, not segment, you have the vertex A, the vertex B, vertex C of your triangle here. And so the segment AC is then this segment right here. And the idea here then of the triangle inequality is if you take if you take any two sides of a triangle, their total length is longer than the, the, the sum of the other sides. Now, in this situation, AC does feel like it's the shortest side here. But if you were to take the side length AB, which kind of looks like it's the biggest length in this triangle, um, it still is true that if you take AC plus BC, it's going to add to be bigger than AB. And then same thing here. If you take CB, maybe CB is the longest. It's hard to tell here which one's longer in my diagram. But nonetheless, if you take AC plus AB, that's longer than the segment BC. You know, if you were to flatten these two sides into a single segment, it's going to be longer than that one. And so the moral of the story when it comes to the triangle inequality is that if you take a detour, it's always longer than if you take the straight path between any points. So we get this very important triangle inequality here. Now, in this statement, I am assuming that the triangle, uh, that the three points are non-collinear. Some people rephrase the triangle inequality to allow for a uh, collinearity in that situation. So in that situation, I should mention that if A and B and C were in fact collinear, uh, then as they're collinear, there's gonna have to be some type of between this statement uh, but, uh, between the three points, A, B, and C, this is a result of trichotomy. And so without the loss of generality, you can assume that B is between A and C in that situation. Then it would then follow that A, B, the segment, plus the segment B, C, would equal the segment A, C, right? The way we've defined segment addition, we get that A, B plus B, C is equal to A, C by the segment addition axiom. Uh, these are the exact same things. We have equality in that situation. Um, therefore, the triangle inequality is sometimes written in the following way, that if A, B, and C are three distinct points with no assumptions about uh, collinearity or non-collinearity, then the segment AC is less than or equal to A, plus, A B plus B, C, where equality only happens in the case where A, B, and C are collinear. If they're non-collinearity, then it'll be a strict inequality. Um, and in fact, I should say that um, the, the equality only happens when B is between A and C in that situation. All right, because notice B is the point that we're acting like is in the middle. Now, we're going to prove this situation where it's a strict inequality because then we don't have to worry about all this um, equality or congruence uh, of the of the betweenness of things, uh, so we're just going to consider the case where it's a where these points are non-collinear, so we get a strict inequality. But it generalizes the other case very quickly by what we talked about just a moment ago. All right, so let's then look at the proof of the triangle inequality. I think I can leave the statement on the screen while we also look at the proof. 
So consider the following situation. So let's take the ray AB like so. And so we'll label our ray. We have A, we have B, and this is some ray. But we also should think of this as the line, as a triangle, right? So we have the vertex C also here as well. So we have our triangle ABC here. And then think of the ray AB. There's going to exist a unique point D on the ray AB such that AD is congruent to AB plus BC, like so. Uh, so there's some point over here, like we called it D. And so we're assuming there's a congruence between um, the segment uh, the segment BD is then going to be congruent to BC, like so. You know, imagine we just took this, we took this point and rotated. Uh, this this segment over here. Uh, so in particular, AD is going to equal the segment AB plus BC, as we've defined segment addition beforehand. So we need to prove that the segment AD is greater than the segment AC, right? So we want to show that this one is longer than that one, because um, if, if, it's, if AD is longer than AC, then that shows that a, well, since AD is equal to AB plus BC, we get exactly what we're trying to prove right here, okay? I guess we should remember that these segments are congruent. That'll probably come in handy right now, right? Because by construction, the segment BD is congruent to BC. We also have, of course, that the, that the point B is between the segment, uh, is between the points A and D. Um, I want us next to consider the triangle BCD, which is not currently drawn here, but if I were to connect it here, the triangle BCD is an isosceles triangle because we have these two congruent um, segments. So by the isosceles triangle theorem, their corresponding angles are also going to be congruent to each other as well. So the angle BCD is congruent to the angle BDC. Also, by the between cross lemma, we have that B is an interior point to the angle ACD. So you have this angle right here, B is an interior point. And that's, of course, because B is between AD, which are these bounding values on the angle ACD, like so. So between cross lemma gives us that. So this shows us the following. We have that the angle ACD which let's draw that on our screen right here. So ACD, we're considering this angle right here. This angle is larger than the angle BCD, and that's because B is an interior point, and that's exactly what that uh, inequality means for angles. But this angle is congruent to this angle because we have um, an isosceles triangle. Therefore, um, looking, at these, looking at these angles here, we have this angle right here, we have this angle right here. We know that this is the big angle and this is the small angle. This is now the time where we're going to use the angle opposite side relation or the AOS for short, which tells us that the big angles coincide with the big sides and vice versa. So if angles looking at the triangle ABD there, uh, excuse me, ADC, C is a bigger angle than D, therefore their opposite sides the opposite side to C, which is AD, will be larger than the opposite side to angle D, which is AC, which then proves the triangle inequality.